His other experiment, also beautifully conceived, uh, was he wanted to get a feeling for the connectivity of society in the USA. And he had the idea of creating lots of letters which would be rather incompletely addressed, really to a stockbroker uh, in Boston. And this was all you would have. You would have a name uh, and the city. Uh, and, you know, it might have some company name like such and such, stockbroking. And he decided that he would put all these letters into the mail system, give them to people at random in a part of the country which socially was as far apart at the opposite pole to Boston. Omaha, Nebraska, it's the only choice. So, <laughs> so he distributes these, these letters in Omaha, Nebraska, sort of 400 at a time or so, and he wants to see what happens to them. So the first person to give them to, what they're told to do, they have an instruction, is get this letter closer to its destination. So if somebody knew a stockbroker, they'd probably post it to them. If they knew someone in the Boston area, they'd post it on to there, hoping that the next person might know a bit better the intended destination. And what he discovered was that, and, then, and when people did post it on, they were asked to send a card back to say they'd done it and um, where they'd sent it. And amazingly, about a fifth of the letters that he started uh, in this system in Nebraska found their way, ultimately, to the intended recipient in Boston. So this was the beginning of an understanding of what became known as social networking or, and the so-called small world structure of networks. Milgram himself created this terminology of the so-called six degrees of separation because on average it took only about six repostings of his letters for the successful mailings to reach their destination. So this then served as the first example of the way in which networks of friends and acquaintances bound and linked people together. So even though the population was in uh, tens of millions, uh, it was possible for a connection to be made between these highly disparate social populations in this very small number of steps. So this great insight of Milgram again way back in the 1960s, in the last 15 years, has become uh, something of a, of a major study. So whether you're studying the structure of the brain, the way it works, you find it has this type of small world network structure, uh, whether you're just un trying to understand social networks or networks of influential businessmen and so forth. You can get a quick understanding. It's not a very accurate way to do the calculation, but you can get a feel for why this is the case. Suppose we assume that each of us know 100 people, okay, just to pick a round number. And let's assume that each of those people knows another 100 people. What we're neglecting here is all the overlaps between those friends, but you can take care of that if you do little more mathematics. So uh, if we take n steps away, so the first step are, uh, are your friends, and then the next step are the friends of the friends, uh, and so on. So uh, if you just take n steps away, uh, you're linked to 10 to the power 2n plus 2 people. Okay, but What's the world population? We've seen it once already, 6.65 billion. That's 10 to the power 9.8. So 10 to the twice n plus 1 is bigger than the world population when 2n plus 2 is bigger than 9.8. So when n exceeds 4, so just four steps away, under this model, you've got more acquaintances than the entire population of the world. When you take into account all those double countings, you know, that after three steps you start running into people that you already accounted in the first step, uh, this changes the calculation a little bit, but not much, and the four becomes six. This is uh, an interesting uh, situation because naively, you know, people think of links, you know, if you want to make a link between uh, yourself and the Pope, say, um, 
you, you might think of the link being made just along all the people in between along a straight line. But what's being investigated here is the fact that the best type of network structures have random links uh, which don't mean that you just have to go around the outside to link people up, but you can jump across. People always take a, uh, a curious view of these things. So here's a, a more grandiose schematic picture with Milgram's uh, famous phrase, the six degrees of separation, uh, that we're not looking at links just along this straight line here, but there are hubs and random interconnections all over the place that drag us back, make us connect to people which are far downstream. When people think about this sort of thing, uh, they tend to pick an example that's odd. So they, if I ask you, now, how many steps are you away from um, meeting the Pope, say? You'll probably find it's rather small. You know, you'll know some, uh, the chap at your local Italian pizza house his mother will have met the bishop in Rome who will be on a nodding terms with the Pope. Uh, this is not the best example to look at. So people are always impressed by this sort of thing. So, you know, have you, how many steps are you away from meeting the Queen? Well, you've met me and I've met the Queen. You're really very close. <laughs> so if you want to find the counter examples, it's not to famous people. You want to, the, the counter example is how many steps are you away from Bulo Bulo, the, uh, the bushman in the Amazon jungle? Okay. And you will not be very closely linked to people of that sort. You'll, or, you know, the, the chief Sherpa and uh, Mount Everest or something like that. So they're the people that have small amounts of connectivity. The other thing that you appreciate from this uh, is that friends of friends of friends, or even friends of friends of friends, are very important, just as important as friends. You see, the thing about your friends is that they're a lot like you. They know all the same sorts of people as you, and they do a lot of the things that you do. So if you're a business person or somebody else interested in having a very broad range of uh, connections, uh, having a lot of input and advice from diverse sources, if you just focus on your friends and immediate acquaintances, you won't produce a very large pool of diverse advice. You'll be talking to people who are a lot like you with the same sort of contacts. They might be university professors and so forth. But if you go one or two steps further downstream, you start to come into contact with those uh, rather loose acquaintances who are magicians and astronauts and footballers or whatever. So they're very different and they have a quite different spectrum uh, of acquaintances and experiences and information. So uh, what I've called the prince and the pauper here is this example as I just gave an effect of you're really rather closely connected, you'll find if you think about it, to very famous people because they have a lot of connections. But you're really rather weakly connected to the paupers, to, to people who live in the middle of nowhere, that don't have a lot of social links. So they're the outliers uh, in this process. <coughs>